uh, Kimley Horn. We're two consultants that work for the National Department of Transportation. We administer uh, traffic calming projects like this one. I'm up here looking weird talking with headphones in my ears because, as I mentioned, we're both online and in the room tonight. And so everyone online is hearing me through my phone and, uh, and, and you all are hearing me uh, hopefully loud enough this way. It's a little weird with things in my ear, but anyhow, Ariana is going to be monitoring the meeting and this portion is for those of you online. If you have questions or comments, you have a chat box feature there that you can see uh, on your screen. Feel free to use that, either push the little hand raise feature or, uh, or go ahead and just type your question if that's, if that's easier to do in that text box. And then what we will do is either read that out loud in the room and answer that or let you speak uh, through also through my phone so that the room here uh, can hear you in that question. We did it this way last time. It went okay. <laughs> I think we got through it and, uh, and hopefully it's a good option for people who can't be here with us uh, at McCabe. Appreciate again everyone's um, uh, participation in this project, and, and it has been kind of a, a long-suffering partic participation. This is the third meeting we've had, and this goes back a number of months. We've been talking about this traffic calming project. Um, I'm going to. This is because this is the third meeting. I'm going to do the best to kind of give, uh, you know, skip over some of the basics, but not too much because I know we probably have folks in the room who have not been aware of this project before. Um, and, but really try to focus on what has changed since the last time we met. But at the end, I want to come back and be sure that we're looking at the current plan as it exists today, and be sure you have any, you know, answer any questions uh, that you have about that. Three main things we're going to cover are, and I'm Gil, I'm on slide two here under the agenda. Three main things we're going to cover is, is what we've heard since the last meeting, a lot of the feedback that has come in, uh, and what has changed in the plan because of that, and then what our next steps are uh, going forward. So just, just to, uh, by way of a little more introduction, um, without jumping too far over some of the basics here in case you are new to this meeting, uh, this is the traffic calming um, project that was selected uh, back end of, end of 2021. And there were, this is actually two projects that were selected. There was a, uh, a Sylvan Park East, we call it, and it has the streets that you're seeing here, Gil, I'm on slide three of Nebraska Avenue, 44th Avenue, and 42nd Avenue. And we're working on all three of those. There was another uh, application that came in at that same time that had some overlap. And this was the 37th Avenue project, and it requested traffic calming also on Nebraska for the same limits, and also on 37th Avenue North and Murphy Road. Uh, we've talked about Murphy Road is, is a little bit higher classification. It's an arterial street. We don't typically do traffic calming on, on those streets, which are busier. Uh, but Nebraska, again, of course, we're doing, and 37th was also uh, selected as part of that. Just visually, this is what it looked like. This is a slide from our going way back to our very first meeting, just so you can see how these four streets kind of interconnect with each other. I think you all know the neighborhood very well and, and where these streets are. So we want to we want to jump to the two two major things that have changed and um, based on comments that we heard since that uh, last meeting. There are two of them. This is the first one. Uh, Gil, I'm on slide six. And the first one we heard, if you remember when we talked about Nebraska Avenue, of course, speed cushions were a, a part of this. But another big part that we talked about was wanting to relook at that cross section on Nebraska. And the way we had it looked at, uh, uh, looking it was on the picture at the bottom of the slide where we had basically about a two foot buffer. And if you look carefully, you can see how the road exists today and it's on the slide at the top. But we scooted everything over to the south side of the road and had a two foot buffer and then about a 10 foot traffic lane, another 10 foot traffic lane. And that bigger area that was left was it's variable, but it's generally about eight feet wide. Uh, and we were anticipating using that as more of a standard width parking lane and you know, some enhancements that would facilitate walking, bicycling, just sort of a general purpose shoulder type of a lane. Uh, that has some merits as we talked about last time, but after we presented that, we got a lot of feedback saying, 
you guys, I, I don't know. We need to rethink that. Let's let's re, relook at that. Is that the best idea? And, and a couple of uh, specific concerns that we, we heard that I think were are very valid. We heard, first of all, we're going to lose some parking capacity. Uh, depending on how you look at it, we might be, you could say we're losing half the parking capacity. We're losing it all off one side of the street. And maybe it's a little more comfortable and a little more standard on one side of the street, but you still have lost quite a bit of parking. I don't disagree with that. I think the parking situation as it exists now leaves something to be desired, but it's there and in its own way, it, it has somewhat of a traffic calming um, function as it exists today. You're also gonna lose some parking convenience. So if I'm on the south side of the street, now if I have you know, uh, service providers, yard people or company coming over for a birthday party, everybody's gotta park on the other side of the street and then cross the street. And, and so uh, that's certainly true. And there is a, uh, there's a convenience factor to that. And then the other one, it's a little more intangible maybe, it's just you just lose some of that buffer space. So now I've got traffic up next to the curb and closer to my mailbox, closer to my house uh, than it was before. I think all of those are very valid reasons. We looked at that and, uh, and we said, you know, it's a simpler, more straightforward project, a cheaper project, if I can say that. If, if we just leave all of that striping alone and come back in and still come with what we consider to be the meat and potatoes of the traffic calming project with it, which is the speed cushions and put those in the lanes as they exist today and work with the existing cross section. Okay. So that was the, that was the first big change. That's a decision that we've made just to leave the cross section alone. The other big change that was made had to do with the scope of the project itself. We, we talked a lot about uh, at the last meeting, um, the, uh, the limits being from 37th to 46th. So on this slide, to try and orient you, Gil, I have moved to slide seven. Get my pointer going here. So, and you, of course, uh, <laughs> this is Nebraska with all the little icons along it. I'll explain those. This is 37th where you have an always stop there. This is 42nd, uh, uh, yeah, 42nd, where you also have an always stop. This is 46th, where you have the signal, and this is 51st, down by the Greenway and Golf Course. Our, our, uh, the application asks for traffic calming from 37th to 46th. Okay, so we sh had showed that we d we had also talked about. We talked about this at the last meeting. There had been some discussion about could that be extended to 51st, uh, and and I think. Long standing before I even got involved with the project, it, uh, folks at NDOT had said, yes, we could do that. And anyway, we, we talked about it at the last meeting, we had shown only the project limits going from 37th to 46th as originally requested. We got a lot of feedback on that. And, and folks said, you know, we really think it does need to go to 51st. We talked about that. And, um, and so we've looked at that and, and made the decision to extend it again, for a couple of reasons. One is, of course, you already have traffic calming on 51st. And if we traffic calm this section, that just leaves this area. This is the part in question that we're talking about, the dotted line, just leaves that sort of as a gap in between two existing sections that do have traffic calming on them. And then the other, the other thing that was mentioned by uh, a lot of folks was the crosswalk there at Sylvan Park, I mean, one block away, but heavily used by Sylvan Park Elementary there at 48th and Nebraska, and, and how that could use some attention from speeding cars uh, and so forth. And so with those things in mind, we made the decision to, to relook at that and, and decided to extend that part of the, the project uh, back up. If I can do this, let me get back to questions in just a minute because of the, the online versus the in the room. I'll, I'll just, I'll get through this and then certainly want to come back to, to questions on that. So those are the two major changes that have occurred uh, since our last meeting. Let me, let me jump and kind of go back through the whole plan as it exists uh, right now uh, in that way, especially if, if you're new to this. So what we're looking at is between 32nd, excuse me, 37th and 51st Avenue, a series of speed cushions. Gil, I've advanced the slide here. Um, 
And those are spaced, as we talked about, a roughly four to 600 feet apart, enough to give us a good, you know, consistent slow speed. Not so many, we hope to be onerous and push traffic other places. That's not our intent uh, with the program. Um, and then, there, we, and, and, and to leave the, uh, to leave the, the cross section alone in our previous slide down in this bottom right hand corner, you had seen, you know, a, a different striping configuration. We've changed that. In leaving the striping pattern alone, we still think there is a need to, to put a, a flexible delineator. You see these, you see them up on Murphy Road. They've put some of these, <clears throat> they're about a yard tall. And um, those would go on the outside of the speed cushions. The purpose there is so someone can't drive around them because they will. <laughs> if we don't make them uh, to where they can't, they will drive around them. And so we would have one of those on, out on the outsides of, of those uh, speed cushions. Um, you may have noticed the little green plant icons on the on the previous slide. We we had intended if we were going to shift that um, shift all the lanes to the south side, there would be some excess pavement, and we thought it would be good to do a little more of a treatment in those corners. We're not doing that now. That that leaves us without some of the room. But we did feel like it was appropriate to continue to to try and do that treatment at the intersection of 57. 50, 42nd and Nebraska. Reason being, that's kind of the hub of this whole project. 42nd is traffic calmed. Nebraska would be traffic calmed. It made sense to kind of be a focal. It's already an always stop. Uh, made sense to kind of be a, a focal point for the project. And we can do some things like tighten the radius of that curve to try and, there's a lot of pavement out there, try and slow, slow uh, turning vehicles down, as well as do some, uh, some delineation Perhaps some planners can be part of this. Uh, we, we've continued to have that, that discussion and show that uh, as part of it. So that's that's the, uh, the the big idea for Nebraska as it stands now. Again, we'll we'll come back to questions here in just a second. Those of you will we'll advance one slide. Let me see if I think you still have this slide. This next one is a picture of, of that intersection of 42nd Nebraska, and, and just to show more or less the scale of the types of things we're talking about, these are, these are the flexible delineators here. That's the planner, that's a standard planner that Metro uses. Um, so we don't have a lot of options in that, but just to give you an idea for, for what those can look like and how they're used, they're, they're crash worthy uh, and, and so forth. Um, So that's Nebraska in a nutshell. And then there are three other, uh, three other streets here, not to give them less attention, but Nebraska has been such a, a visible part of all of this and had a lot of discussion and, and largely because you got a lot, you got different opportunities given the, the configuration of the street. So what we're looking at on, on slide 10 is um, going from left to right, you've got 44th Avenue here, you've got 42nd Avenue here, uh, let's let's cover those quickly. We showed these, and again, we've just got pretty standard spacing of traffic uh, of speed cushions north and south uh, through those two streets. Those look a little different because the stop configurations are different on both the street. Those streets stop for different cross streets. Uh, of course, 42nd has fewer stops. They just have two always stops. One of the changes I didn't go over, it's not a major design change, but it was something that came up in our last meeting that we have uh, altered is on the 42nd one up, up by the NBA fields, just south of Nevada, we did have another speed cushion. We talked about that. Um, some folks said, I relook at that. And in fact, we had already had some, some idea that we might not need that one. It, it's up, it's kind of a, um, uh, institutional use with the parks and everything there, not as many houses. And so anyway, we decided to strike that one and just, and just you, you kind of enter the, the, the traffic calming project on 42nd once you get to Dakota there. That's really the only change that we've made uh, since we talked last on that one. And so there, there hasn't been a lot of discussion on, on those. And, and while I'm here on this slide, I'll give an update on 36th. Seventh. This is the layout here. There's there's two sets of speed uh, cushions proposed there. Again, to orient you, this is Murphy Road down here, and Nebraska here in the always stop. I'm 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 sorry. I'm I'm showing I'm showing up there on the wall, but it's that little red dot. I don't know if you can see that, but anyway, Mur Murphy Road here, 
Nebraska here, uh, the railroad tracks, I don't know, somewhere I think right through there. And so we got one set uh, north of Nebraska, one set south of Nebraska. That project has already progressed to the point we went ahead. There, there was no discussion on, on that. Uh, we put that out to the street. We got the required petitions. It's, it's moving. So uh, NDOT will be ordering the, the materials for that one. Um, they may have even done it today, today, tomorrow, this week. So uh, that's, that one is, is moving on. It's, it's a little bit ahead of schedule of, of these other two. Okay. Um, th this one here. Uh, this this is just the the forty second, excuse me, the forty fourth Avenue layout and the forty second Avenue layout, and we can come back to those and and talk talk about those going north south. This is Nebraska here. Just some snapshots here. If there's any questions about, you know, what what speed cushions are, what, you know, we can talk more about that. We've covered that um, in in past meetings, but be glad to come back to that. And that's just a visual. If there are questions about that, let me talk a little bit about the next steps, and and then we'll go back and and talk more about the the design and, and uh, where we are. Um, so we we had a very similar slide last time. We have added a third meeting as we talked and we said, you know, there, there's enough change here. We need to come back to the community because that was one of our, our, our issues last time, frankly. We took out that section going to 51st and then just presented it and people said, whoa, what happened? <laughs> we, we didn't know. So uh, with all this, we, we learned and said, we're going to come back and let's show this. The, so we've, we've, we've gotten through all of these things. I put a check and an X beside petition because another big change that has happened since we met was that uh, NDOT has, has, is relooking at the way they do the petition slash balloting process, okay? Up until now, it's always been, and 37th was probably the last project that went through the old petition uh, phase where you had to get... NDOT, Yes, sir, thank you. NDOT is a, is a new national department. In fact, it was on the ballot uh, a week or so ago. You may have seen that. Uh, it did pass. It, it is a. It is Nashville's newest department. Is Nashville Department of Transportation. Thank you. And uh, and so the, that petition process was such that you had to go door to door and get 70% of the owners of the property on the project to agree to, to sign on to that petition. Uh, we were finding a lot of neighborhoods toiling and toiling for months, and you know due to landlords who lived out of town or or just whatever it was really hard to achieve that and so um it has been changed the new the new ballot process is truly a vote it's truly a ballot and we're not looking for a set number the way we were and now it is it's two-thirds of all responses passes if 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 you know 100 people vote you need 66 of those have to be in favor We'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. I think that's on my next slide. And so, I, and I want to go. I want to go into more depth there on the on the ballot process. And then, lastly, we would get into the installation process if it passes. So, let's look at that. The question uh, uh, there in the uh, if you're online was was who gets to vote. So, let's look at the ballot process. It is 66 majority of of the responses into that ballot process. Um, the people that get to vote are those abutting. The right of way. So, um, if I, if you're on Nebraska, you share or you share a property line on Nebraska. You may be on a corner, but you still have have property that touches the Nebraska right of way. That would be um, you would vote then. And I'll show you a visual of that in just a second. Um, we don't require people to go out and do this anymore. So now, much like if any of you are on any of these streets, except for maybe 37th. You should have gotten a card for this meeting, okay? We use that same, uh, if you own the property, we use that same mailing list for the balloting process. And so, and you'll get a very similar card uh, that'll that'll show you how to go about the vote. So we, we send that to everyone instead of, you know, asking people to go. Uh, one, of the, one of the rationales there is 
when we were asking neighborhood volunteers to do this, we didn't know if they had touched everybody or not. And, and you know, in, in their defense, they didn't have to. They just had to get 70% of the people. That means 30% of the people may not have known anything about the process. So we're trying to go back and make sure we're doing more to, to educate people, at least give them the opportunity to learn about um, the, the project. Um, you get a you get a code. I'll show you this. Um, you can vote for or against. That was another thing we couldn't do in the past. You couldn't vote against. So if someone didn't sign, we didn't know if that meant they didn't own the property, they weren't home that day, they didn't like it. We we had no idea. Uh, and so now we at least know. You know, if we've got a significant opposition, we'll know that. You know, and people can vote against it. We think that's fair. And then lastly, it's a six week balloting period as opposed to right now it is six months um, and there are neighborhoods that have been out six months. And so at least at the end of six weeks, we have a, a definitive answer, uh, yes or no on it. So here's some visuals here. This is what the postcard looks like. You've got a little QR code, you've got a link here. And so you get that. We do have, we just started our first neighborhood on Monday going through this process, going well, we don't know of, uh, uh, any issues, when you scan that, it opens up an online ballot. It takes you to a Nashville.gov site. You put in a little information. There is a code that we give you down here on the bottom of the card. You enter that code so that we know it, 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 you're not voting for your neighbor. <laughs> we know you're voting for yourself. And, uh, and, and we go for it and we go like that. We get all the results back. So the, the group, like uh, this is a, a visual example of Nebraska, and here's who we would anticipate um, would, would get the vote for that. It's all of the properties in yellow that, that touch, um, touch Nebraska there. How about the people who only have egress to Nebraska? Have no other egress to Nebraska. What happens? So there, there are a few examples of that. One of them is, is, uh, is, is uh, Colorado down here, um, and, and that does happen. And um, we don't give them the vote on this. And, and well, the, the reason is um, this one is not, it's not a terrible example of this, but we do get neighborhoods where you, you may have a street and you guys, are, you guys are very much a grid traditional neighborhood pattern. We get a lot of neighborhoods that are in the program that they they may have a local street, and then coming off of this is a cul-de-sac with 50 houses on it. Okay, and so what what happens if we start giving all of those people the ability to say what happens on on the the collector street is they're not influenced by it, they don't see it, they don't they don't live with it, uh, they they certainly have to travel over it, and um, you know experience that 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 traffic calmed street, but, but um, I think they're much likely, much more likely to be in opposition to it because they don't have the, the, uh, the impact of the speed. So that's the rationale behind doing that. That has been, in the, that has been on the books since 2018. Uh, I wrote it. <laughs> we have not always enforced it that way. Uh, and, and there have been plenty of occasions where we would have in the past few years said, you know, you vote. Um, and, and so that has always been kind of a, a little bit of a up in the air and, and sort of at, at the discretion of the engineers looking at it. And NDOT has come back and said, we got we to gotta set something so people know what to expect. And so they started, we started, uh, you know, sticking to that a little bit better. But uh, anyhow, I can see it both ways. <laughs> there's, a, there's uh, you know, certainly something to be said for people who have to travel Nebraska for, for a lot of for a lot of purposes, it is their street. You know, they travel it all the time. I, I totally get it. Um, but but then there are people that, you know, that literally live on it and, and have a different experience with it. So. We haven't sent it yet, so it'll be six weeks. When we, when we do this card, I know you can't read this, but we put a little date up there, so it'll be six weeks from that date, whatever, whatever that is. Uh, <laughs> The general community that's something that uh, yeah, we it says in this text that it's six weeks from that date. So, well, we don't we haven't sent the cards out yet, so I, I don't know. Um, so we can communicate that. Yeah, we'll certainly yeah, we can certainly communicate that. Yeah. Okay, we're we're gonna for for everyone on. Uh, 
yeah, for, for everyone, uh, so the question is, in the room here is, uh, on this slide, uh, everyone in yellow would get the cards. That's, that's illustrating uh, that rule of anyone who touches that right of way would, would have the vote within the limit. So we don't go on the other side of, we don't go on the other side of 30, uh, 37th. Uh, and we don't go around the corner here on 51st. And those people, we know you, they, we know they use Nebraska too. Uh, but we have to we we draw those limits accordingly. All right, for those of you online, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and open it to questions. We got a few in the room here, uh, and so if you do have questions, we'll maybe we'll try to alternate or something, and and just be sure those are in the chat box. So we'll go ahead in the room. Good question. The question is: Is it one vote one vote per household or people? It is per household. So you'll get one card. Unless you own multiple properties, you'll get one card. If you do own multiple properties, you will get more than one card. They will each have a unique number and you will vote for on behalf of that property. Good question. Um, it's a bit of a wide question and probably only applicable to this part of the design. Um, given the length of the project, if there is, um, is it, is it going to be only looked at from 51st to 37th? or if there's kind of support. Oh, even the, yeah. the original plan versus not the 4651, might, might it be subdivided? Um, the question is, could this kind of happen in sections? Could you have, for instance, a 51st to 46, and then a 46 to 37th, for instance, have two different? Um, we typically do look at it that way. If if it makes sense to split it, we've not really talked about it here. Um, but uh, you know, I guess it could depend on how the results come out. If you get one half of the project that's really in favor of it and the other half is not, you know, we would probably look at it that way. But it would have to be at a segment that would make sense. In my mind, 46 would make sense. It's kind of two. In some ways, it's two uh, independent sections, but. Uh, Preferably, I think it would make sense if it were all or nothing. I mean, just to, like we talked about earlier, just so that it's a continuous, you know, section all the way through. But I guess we would play that one by ear a little bit. Another question? Yes, Jeff. I'd like to ask you about the 46 to 31st uh, section. And I'm going to come at it from a bit of an engineering point because I'm a civil engineer and I've spoken to my name as very um, I'm a little confused. This section originally was not part of this study. And then it was in, and then it was out. When I left the last meeting, I thought we were going to look at it as a separate study. Now I find it's back. Who made the decision to put it back? Uh, I, the traffic calming team, which is uh, us as consultants. Okay. I, why don't I talk to you after after the meeting? Uh, the, the program manager's name is Gil Thomas. I believe he's on the call, and and so we can we can certainly do that. So the question is, what is the data um, on Nebraska? What's the data situation leading us to this? Specifically, why is the section uh, on, on the western end toward 51st back in? So the data that we have for this section and the reason Nebraska got picked and, and really brought this whole thing into this, this end of, of Civil Park, 37th was its own thing and got picked on its own, but, but Nebraska was the street that actually brought it in to uh, the, the western end of Sylvan Park, the data that was collected was midway in between 40th and 41st, so right here. And so what happens is when, when an application comes in and we get a lot of them, we have right now something like something north of 400 streets that have been applied for. So there's a lot. And so when that many streets come in, we would love more data, but we get like one data one data shot per street. We can't do any more. Like that, that's that's uh, enough. And and really, for us as practitioners, um, we understand that you know unless a street really really changes location or characteristics or land use, 
it's it's kind of good enough. You know what I mean? We we can collect data one spot, and it kind of tells us the nature of Nebraska or any other street. You know, as long as there's not like a interstate interchange in, in between or something like that. So there, so that's where our data is. It's between 40. 40th and 41st. I went back and looked at. So where did we actually count that back at the end of 2021? That's where it is. The data right there is. It's like um, I think the, the prevailing speed. We use something called 85th percentile speed, which sort of defines for us what a speeding problem is. Uh, 85th percentile speed was 36 miles an hour. It signed 25. That 11 mile per hour differential ranked you high enough to warrant the traffic calming project. Got about 1,400 cars a day on it, uh, but you know all of those are just numbers that that we believe you know accurately represents the street. Now, it, is it going to be different down here? Some, I'm sure it's not going to be the same exactly, but it's also not going to be the same one block over, or you know certainly three or four blocks over. So, for us, the data is there and supportive, and and it doesn't give us. Uh, any concern to, to use that data point to speak for uh, all of Nebraska. So if there's no data, what would be the reason for not having a separate study for the citizens? Because the reason I ask it, I would agree and I understand that on the other side of 46, they have the same issues and all sorts of issues. On our side of 46, I think there's some business I think a lot of a lot of the reason why we would put it in now is expediency uh, and, and looking at both the the um, quantitative data which you're talking about but also there's that qualitative part which says it only makes sense to make this you know a continuous project so we look at those kind, kinds of things but I think folks understand with as much demand as there is for this program to not do it down and, and to throw it back in and let it compete on its own it, it's um, you know, it can certainly be done that way, uh, but but uh, it'll take a lot of time to work its way back up. And but well, we're going to have the opportunity to people in yellow have the opportunity to vote, and that opportunity will not be taken away. Is that correct? Sure. Yeah. And that was back to my question as well. That the residents directly impacted by the 51st to 46 section collectively don't believe that there's value. That their votes will show that, and then it just Not necessary to litigate whether or not we should be voting, correct? 
<laughs> yeah, the question is, is, is this, I guess, essentially the final decision uh, as it stands right now, unless we hear a fatal flaw and that's why we come back and we want to communicate and, and if there are any, any, you know, anything fail that we just missed, we would like to hear that. But, but right now that's, that's where we stand is we're, we're ready to go to a ballot on that. Um, let me take, yeah. yeah. People online asking if you've been Nebraska design again. Okay, great. Let me flip back over there. Look, I was going to say, let us let's take a, a question if we have one from uh, online. And what I will do is, uh, Ariana, is there anything that you want to read, or should we just go live? And I can let them talk into the uh, room. Well, the other thing, uh, Whitney was asking if possible to relay what's going on in the room to people online and then there's concern about um, the plan from 37 to 46. Um, so just again kind of like voting concerns if one stretch of the plan chooses to not proceed with the traffic calming plan proposed and another portion does want traffic calming then how we would mitigate that. Okay well the, the numbers um, the numbers we would just we would take and and I I think I'm, you know, this is generally a, a team decision. We'd go back to NDOT, but what I would think would happen is if, if one side or the other of 46 did not pass the, the two thirds mark, um, you know, we, we would talk about whether it needs to happen on that, that section or not. Uh, if they both do, great. If they both don't, great. Uh, if one does, one don't, <laughs> doesn't, that, that presents a, a different wrinkle there. Um, so I did put back the I did put the Nebraska plan back up, and um, so just if you're seeing this for the first time, when you see the little uh, two black squares with uh, a golden halo around them, those are speed cushions. Uh, you're probably familiar with those. That's what you have on on 51st Avenue. It's the closest ones to you. Something very very similar to that, uh, and so those, those would extend along uh, Nebraska, three locations west of 46. And then uh, six locations on the east side of 46. And then the, the little potted plants there in the middle at 42nd Avenue just to indicate some special treatment with the bulb outs um, there at that intersection. So if Hi, this, is, this questions... is Whitney. Uh, I, I'm, I'm the one, or I've, I've been one of the ones posing a few questions uh, in the chat. Uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to join at the beginning. So one of my I guess my question about the voting is I live in the stretch between uh, 37th and 46th uh, and I'm very impacted by the speed and also several accidents that have happened within uh, a block of myself of my house. So I guess what I want to make emphasize is a I hope my neighbors between 37th and 46th vote in favor, um, but also I, I want to kind of put a plug in to considering uh, taking the votes separately. I'm not I'm not sure because I couldn't hear what was being said in the room. If the folks from 46 to 40, 51st are less in favor or in favor of the plan, I just hope that if there is a, a great difference between the voting, that that be bifurcated because the stretch from 36 to 46 or 37th to 46th, it, it's greatly needed, in my opinion, because I live right in the middle of it. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, that's that's the issue we've been talking about. And, um, you know, it's a hypothetical decision at this point, but uh, but it, to us, it seems to make some sense. There is a break point at 46, but that would be the only one. We wouldn't, we're not going to take this on a block by block <laughs> get, get basis and put a speed cushion if it passes and not if it doesn't. So. Thank you for that comment. Is, is there anybody else on the phone that wants to, to speak to the room here? The question. All right, hearing none, we got a few hands back in the room. So, um, I, uh, so I couldn't be at the Zoom meeting on the town, and I really regret that because I see they taking out the speed that's in that. The so one speed that's that I was not worried about, which was on 42nd, other on the 42nd of the block. Nevada, and I have a, we're talking about Nebraska, Nevada, mm -hmm. um, and I, I just, you know, again, no data, but I watch people come down that hill from Elkin, going like that out of hell, and yeah, the NBA fields are right there. I don't know what that has to do 
we did was people cutting through from Charlotte to Murphy that are driving too fast, and my daughter and other children on our street are riding their bikes. They're going over to MDA a lot to ride their bikes or their scooters when there aren't things going on there. Um, and somebody coming over that hill is going way too fast. Um, you know, I don't see anything on this that's going to Yeah. Is to me, that you know, if the if the goal is to stop cut through traffic, then the fact that NBA feels right here doesn't make it so easy. You, you said something about taking out that one speed cushion by the NBA field. What about between Elkins and Charlotte? Yeah. So okay. Are you, are you taking those out too, or you left those in? Or had those in. So the question here was, if you couldn't hear that, it was about. Um, the, the speed cushion that we took out on 42nd that was just north of, of Dakota, somewhere between Dakota and Nevada. It, it may have been just north of Nevada, but anyway, it was certainly north of, of Dakota. And we looked at it more from a land use standpoint, the same as we, did, we didn't ever plan anything from Charlotte the first couple blocks. And the reason was it's not neighborhood. It's, it's, um, it's parking lots or, or the, the ball fields and those types of things. Nothing saying you can't do it. But again, we're, we're, we're trying to really um, bring the influence onto residential neighborhood properties, you know, people that are living in their front yards. And so uh, some places you have that, some you don't. I, I think it's something we can still look at. I know the daycare center. Yeah, well. It just doesn't even make sense to me. If you're, if you're trying to stop country traffic, why you wouldn't keep the whole thing? All the way up to, all the way up to Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's just commercial properties, and we feel like it's you know having access into those properies. True. We just we we see. Yeah. 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 Yeah part of it. So, um, you, you know, anyway. And the, my second question is, uh, where does this intersect with enforcement? Because, and I'm, I admit that I'm outstanding in California style. Where does, like, I, I don't know if folks on the ground are talking about 37, but I have almost been run over a folks on 37, coming down 37, and not stopping at that time at all. Where does where do all these structural things intersect with enforcement with methods? So the question is about enforcement, and one of the things that we talk about early on is, is there's a couple of E's. There's enforcement, there's education, there's engineering. We focus on engineering. That's our that's our part. A little bit about education. Sometimes we'll use some feedback signs, you know, and things, but. But really, we find the most effective treatment to be in engineering. If we put something physical there to slow traffic down, we can do that. MNPD may come out. If you can get them out, great. We, you know, would, you'd love to have them and, and have them write a few tickets, and I think that would have some impact for a, for a term. I don't know how long that would last, and then it goes back to normal. They're just so, they're just so covered up. And, and I don't know if anyone has ever put in the request to have a, 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 an officer come out and do that, but uh, it, it just – it's it's spotty at best, you know, if they have time to do it. So we 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 are the DOT and we have no enforcement arm. Uh, so this is this is what we can control. Unfortunately, it's a good it's a good thing and it and it works. Yeah, and it works with enforcement. We just just kind of a different approach. Yeah, I have two questions. One, how many properties were in the Coast Guard? You know the count. I can look it up, but I don't have it. Okay. Top of mind. And then the second question is. So will there be four different potential votes? 46 to 51st, 46 for Nebraska that night, and then 45 to 44 is running? Well, um, in a sense, it'll be one vote. We'll, right, we'll, right. Yeah, we'll put it all out at one time. We definitely will look at this street separate, this street separate, Nebraska separate, and then 37th has already gone through. The only question there is, like with Nebraska, would we bisect that if one area comes out, one half comes out different than the other? Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm trying to put y'all on speaker. Hopefully, they can hear you on. On 37 and Nebraska, originally you had a bulb out at the at just the upper left corner there. Have you taken that out? We we did. Good 
good chin and, and uh, good eye, we did take that out. And, and that was, um, you know, that was a casualty of, of not restriping the road. Had we restriped the road and pushed everything on the south side, we had a little bit more room. As it is, we just don't have that room, so I'm not doing it. Um, I know from what I've seen on Berkey, for example, um, the the linears, great idea. Definitely needed to keep the traffic from going around. But like the ones on Berkey, a lot of them are actually already tipped over. I'm also a little. I, I'm 110% in favor of this project. I'm concerned what that means for like street sweeping. Do we give up street sweeping? Um, if we have the delineators and are, are there just any other design, we should be thinking about whether it's for the street cushion itself or the delineator that might not leave us with a bunch of runover delineators yeah. um, that aren't maintained probably as frequently as we would be. So a question about the delineators and, and maintenance. Um, I, I, I think it's safe to say there will be some impacts to st street sweeping. Um, you know, that's not to say they're, they're not going to they're not going to avoid the street. They're, those will just be you know every so often. So they'll sweep, drive around it, I presume, and get back to the curb and sweep that way. Uh, when they did bike lanes before, they actually got out manually. You know, any any area they can pull out, they would just do that. They do have now a a bike lane sweeper, uh, but when it's when it's such a small part like that, I can't imagine they'll load that up and bring it. Um, in, in terms of the maintenance of those, they probably will get hit. The question is how you know how often, how long, um, and so that just becomes a part of of the the end dot maintenance. Um, and it and it's probably more than anything putting that on, on you know request to get that to get that maintained. The nice part. Of it, I'm going to contradict myself because I saw something other than this on Murphy on my way here, but typically the base stays put and it's a cotter pin that holds that plastic sleeve and all they do is come out and put a new sleeve and a new cotter pin in. I did see the base come up on that other one, so sorry, sorry about that. I'm going to keep making this. I just have a question. Okay. Matt, on the left. We have the vertical trees. I think one is 47, uh, 44 and 47. Uh, and, uh, I told you to talk to the meetings that's why they're separate. Are those two separate projects? They're included. They're included. The question is, is, is 42nd and 44th are those separate projects? I mean, we're showing them here just because it's a good time to talk about them. Um, they're all part of this whole traffic calming project in Sylvan Park. But when we ballot that, when we vote, these people will, will only be voting for that street, and these people will only be voting for that street, uh, and, and Nebraska will only be voting for itself. You see what I mean? So, uh, uh, it's part of this. It's not a future project. It, it will be balloted along with these others, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's on the track forward. The only one that's in any different situation is 37th, and it's actually ahead of the other three. Yeah, comment, especially in light of what's gone on in Rutherford County over the last week, the, when we look into other options for that school crossing in the school, neither a stop sign or a crossing guard were going to be realizable in the near future. So I think from a safety point of view and land that school does change some, some people's thoughts about the speeding that goes on earlier in the morning, later in the afternoon as well. Well, that's yeah. wrong out of the school bus, out of the school shops. That crossing is pretty dangerous uh, right now. That can tell you some personal experience. And, uh, but it's also um, 48 is the main uh, entrance to that part of the greenway from that side of the neighborhood. Yeah. Seven days a week. Just some comments here about the, the interaction between the, the school kids walking and uh, the project. Um, I did meet with uh, Principal Getz there at uh, because one of the things that we heard was, you know, traffic's already a mess in this area. We know it is. You know, it's a neighborhood school, and it's kind of that way at every neighborhood school we've we've ever seen. And and uh, so the the concern was, well, if you put if you put these speed cushions, doesn't that just kind of gum it up even worse? And, uh, you know, I guess you can look at that a couple of different ways. Um, 
in our minds, it's already bad. And, and, you know, the speed cushions are probably going to have least effectiveness during that arrival and dismissal time because traffic is already slow. That was her take on it as well. Yeah, maybe latecomers, they're coming in fast or whatever. But um, the other thing that she mentioned was that is a very heavily used, she did say, and I, you know, I want y'all to know, this is from the school, that anytime a, a, you know, structured, organized group of school kids is using that intersection, there's an adult with them. That's what they said. And so, um, but I think in, in any case, the, you know, slowing traffic down on that, on that half a block in advance of that, um, you know, can only be a, a help to that. So another question. Um, what happens between speed bumps and Okay. Question about the the placement of speed cushions on the section between uh, 46 and 51st, we do have three shown. And the way we lay these out is, and that we do the same thing pretty much anywhere we're looking, is we kind of take some control points along the street and then divide it up to achieve good spacing. So here, our control points would be 51st, where you have a, a 90 degree turn that kind of serves as, it's not a stop, I know, but it, you, you got to go pretty slow around that curve. So that's one, and then we really don't have anything else that breaks traffic until the signal there at 46. So we look at that as one section, and then we, we, that's where we start looking at our, our four to 600 spacing and say, okay, to achieve that, uh, that, that puts us, we need about three sets of cushions, and here's roughly how they'll be spaced. So we're trying to just get kind of equidistant spacing from those two control points. That's why there's another one down here and not just two around the crosswalk. Well, I, I mean, you 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 could. Uh, the, I guess the 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 issue we would see is then you've got a gap between here and here of you know maybe 800 or 1,000 feet that you know our experience is traffic that's long enough for traffic to speed up and get back up to speed. You know the reason we space those that way is so it's just inconvenient enough that I don't get over the spread of the cushions and then take off again. I know there's another one coming a certain distance away, so. That's why we use that four to 600 feet. You can always reduce or increase, but um, state of the practice in our experience in Nashville is that's a, that's a good spacing. Mm -hmm. Picking up on this gentleman here uh, about stop signs, why can't we have a stop sign at crosswalk? That comes up a lot. Uh, Stop signs, but like we've already he heard here a couple of times, people don't stop at the stop signs. And so what we find is, um, you know, when, when we start looking at stop signs, there are warrants that have to be met, volume warrants uh, through a, a national manual. And so, um, you know, stop signs kind of run a different track. They go through a traffic and parking commission that is a metro board, uh, and they, they look at all of those. So we don't have stop signs in our toolbox as part of this program. But if you have a safety issue at a crosswalk, and I'm convinced that you probably do, I would think the stop sign would go a long way to making sure that the cars see that and stop. And it's not a toolbox. I mean, and we talked to our like, uh, Captain Murphy, Councilwoman Murphy, that heard on that. I thought she was having that. But when you did talk to the other gentleman's name, the car traffic numbers weren't enough to warrant. Yeah, but it's a safety issue for children. about the school zone signing and marking. Um, uh, you, you did pose that, and, and what we have done is, is put that back in through the traffic engineering 
group to take a look at that and look at what other signs, if any, that are needed in that school zone. Uh, again, that's just a little bit, I know it sounds funny, it's just a little bit out of the purview of, of the traffic calming program. We have certain tools uh, and then traffic engineering and signal operations, all these other groups have other tools that they can use. Crosswalks really does not fall in traffic calming. Uh, we, we recognize every time we come to a meeting, practically it feels like someone's asking for a crosswalk, but um, we handle that by looking at the speed on that approach. If it's still like, you know, if we go in and that speed comes down and people still say, you know, it's still not stopping or is this, there's still too much speed in front of us, you know, we can always look at additional treatments, whether that's push buttons, flashing lights, a pedestrian bridge up over the road, I'm kidding, but whatever, you know, what other, whatever other, uh, options might be appropriate to look at uh, there. Nothing that we're doing here precludes any any other changes to the street in the future. I guess I just wanted to offer, you know, I know you were talking about the crosswalk, but I see this as really a holistic plan for the issues we're having. And so, you know, by looking at it holistically through this whole section of Nebraska, connecting to what we already have on place in 51st, I mean, besides just calming traffic, is a correct thing that we're also trying to divert traffic to use the arterial ways, whatever that word is, to, to use 46 and um, and Murphy, you know, for that and through traffic rather than having no routers. Yeah. So, so the question has to do with diversion of traffic. In, in some cases, that's appropriate, and we try to do that. There, there are plenty of intersections where you, you, you may have a big major intersection, and then there's a little residential street that gives you a little runaround. We, we see that all the time. Those, those become great traffic calming projects because those people have real needs. You know, they just happen to live next to a big, scary intersection, and so traffic comes to it. Y'all don't really have that as much. You, you, you may say, well, you know, you get some trying to get from Sylvan Park to or through uh, Murphy Road to uh, Charlotte, but you got a grid, so there's a bunch of different ways people know. We're not, in this case, trying to divert traffic uh, off of a street as much as what we're just trying to get it to slow down on that street. That's what we're trying yeah, to do. Related here. to school traffic, there's one way in or one way out, so uh, to the school. So school traffic coming through, uh, they can go two blocks over and make sure the school right. So all of them do. Well, uh, a question in the back. about rumble strips so you talk about noise that's where the noise is. they're they're very noisy we we typically yeah um, yeah i mean we we just find these to be the most effective lowest noise it's kind of the, the best all around tool that that we have there are certainly other things we we talk about some of those but um that's where we are any anything else on line i don't want to uh, if we still got people hanging on with us. Yeah, there's no questions. There. Okay. Just a couple comments. Okay. Um, again, in support of traffic calming in general. Um, but yeah, if anyone has a question, they'd rather come off to you. I think that would be. Yeah. Anybody else online that wants to come off and ask a question? We still got a few hands in the room. We'll, we'll keep going here in the room, Jenny. We have one in the chat. Um, oh, okay. This is from Leslie. Since I do not currently live in my home and have tenants living there, I will probably not receive the card. How do I vote as the owner? Good question. Um, yeah, I think it may have been on the slide, but we probably didn't talk about it. It's a very good question. You will receive the card, actually. So the cards are going to the owner's addresses. So if, if uh, you own a property but don't live here, we're going to send it to your registered where we think you live uh, based on Metro's roles. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's how we send that. What, what's more likely is if you've got a tenant, they won't get a card. You know, they, we, we're not canvassing the, the properties on the street itself. We're, in fact, sending those cards. I'm glad she said that. I probably was not very clear on that. 
we are, we are balloting all of the properties that we showed you in yellow, but the ballot will go to the owner of those properties. Okay. Good clarification. All right, Jenny. Yeah. I was wondering if you could illustrate who would be voting on the 42nd and 44th discussion since there are the houses that are facing the street. Yeah, I, I don't have a, a visual of that, but um, it, it's the same principle. It's every property that is adjacent to those streets. Um, so you went on the corner. You went on the corner. Um, that That's right. All the way up to Charlotte, or just all the way up to the all the, all the way through the limits of the project. So yeah, we wouldn't go to Charlotte, and, and that's another, I guess, clarification. It, I don't think there are any on this project, but if there are any, uh, except maybe down at, at Murphy, but that was only on the 37th Avenue uh, project. The corner of, corner of Elton Ventura that go. Yeah, I'll have to look and see what our limits are. So, so I think what we did was was on this one, take it up through the always stop, and on this one up to the the stop there. So I guess the question earlier about the graphic, I mean, this is that, this is it. Talk talk to me afterwards on your issue. here in the room was that uh, we need to make sure that stop signs are here on these streets. You know, we, we talk about speed, speed, speed limits, speed limits. <laughs> uh, one of the things we talked about earlier about the, the education component, you know, just, I don't know if it makes a difference, but we can't expect people to go if they don't know what the speed limit is. Again, we appreciate you coming. Um, certainly appreciate the participation and uh, feedback on this. Um, uh, we, you know, like I said, after that last meeting, we got a lot of, of comments by email. Feel free to continue to send those. When you send those, what I do is, um, you know, from that point, if I have other meeting information or project information, I just kind of use that and I'll, I'll blast that out. So if you if you sent a comment in to me after last meeting, you should have gotten at least a, a response, I think two or maybe more, but um, but feel free to do that. And, and in doing that, we can kind of let you know, hey, cards are, we think cards are going out this day and kind of give you some, maybe a little insider information. That, that's the only way we had to communicate with all of you uh, other than the the sponsors, uh, you know, the applicants were, were Beth. Beth, maybe you were the sponsor for the applicant on, on all of these, but those are our formal contacts. But as, as you all have taken time out of uh, your schedule to come and be with us, we want to uh, certainly bring you into that and give you as much information as we can. Jeff, this is Jason. Jason, hang on just a second. I've got a comment okay. here. I guess that would be helpful. We will um, we'll put my email in the chat if you're online and if you are uh, in the room. I don't think I have it on here, but um, I'll just I'll just read it out. It's Jeff Hammond, J E F F H A M M O N D at B U R C H transportation dot com. I'll probably spell that. B is in dog, B U R C H. No, B U R, B is in boy, Birch, B U R C H. 
I'll spell transportation wrong if I try to spell it. <laughs> Trust y'all to know. Jeff Hammond at birchtransportation.com and Ariana get that in the chat uh, for you. And again, we think this is being recorded, hopefully. And so if, if you want to relive the magic of this meeting and pull that back up and, and that that information should be there uh, as well in that chat room. If you can't take it down. Was there was there something else? Well, okay. Jeff, oh yeah, J Jason, that's who it was. Go ahead, Jason. Yes, sir. I'm gonna put you yeah, on the just, speaker. No, that's great. Just uh, real quick, um, there was a comment in the chat about you know sending to the uh, their address. They you know they have a tenant there. Uh, feel free to just email your address to Jeff directly, just so that we make sure we don't don't miss you. Um, sometimes people don't forward their mail or there might be something wrong with the tax record or so it, it will help, you know, make sure we don't make a mistake. So. Yeah, that, that, uh, that's true. We are pulling this information from the tax record. So if you, if you know, there's an issue there and want to, you know, be sure we get it to you as the owner in the right place, feel free to touch base with us. With that, we'll say thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Again, thanks for, for your attendance here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and to all of you online, thank you for joining. We're, we're going to wrap up uh, for now. At, at any time, you've got my email address and, and uh, uh, probably some contact uh, opportunities there directly with NDOT. Feel free to reach out to any of us on the traffic calming team. And thank you for your attendance as well. Good night.